welcome back to a brand new episode of HGO The Show, where we talk about everything that's hot in the world of games. I'm your host, Ethan, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host with the co-host, it's Hunter. Hey, Hunter, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing all right. Good to be here with you on this swell evening. Uh, you didn't try hard enough on that one, dude. I'm also joined by the Scottish smasher, it's Jack. Hey, Jack. How's it going, everyone? Yeah, <laughs> great. And then finally, wrapping up our little group, it's the Backstreet Boy himself. He hates that name so much. It's Sam. Hey, Sam. How you doing? Dude? Hey, how's it going, guys? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. You, you look like you want to kill me every time I say it, dude. And that's why I keep saying it. It's, it's bad, bad, dude. It's real bad. <laughs> it's so good, dude. It's so good. And do you know what's also good? Hot Game is only where each and every week, usually on a Monday, but this week on a Wednesday, we come to you to talk about everything that's happening in the world of games. You can find us on podcast services everywhere, including iTunes, Amazon, Google Play. We're basically everywhere. You can find us except for SoundCloud because we don't do with that because I'm not paying for the fees. You can find us on YouTube for the video version of these podcasts where you can see our faces as we talk nonsense at bit.ly slash the gig as guys to 100 subs so Kyle can play Mario 64, apparently. We're actually getting there, <laughs> so yeah. Hey, that's the incentive. So if you want, if you want Cal to 100% Mario 64, make sure to subscribe and tell your friends all about it. We also have a highlights channel, which has also gone to shit this week because the timing for everything's fucked. There will be highlights this week. I don't know when they'll be up, so stay tuned and go and subscribe to HGO Highlights. That's at bit.ly slash HGO Clips for that one. Why not HGO Highlights? Because I thought it was too much effort for you to type out. So there you go. Um, our lord and savior ethan yeah dude our lord and savior we weren't on live on monday but there was a reason for it we were lazy but in regards to that we did upload hunter's hades review so go and check that out that went live on the channel your support so far has been pretty great and we'd love it if you'd all go yeah. over there hit Thank like you. hit comment more reviews it. coming crash for hopefully next week if i can finish it that's why this is a review in progress and um tell me why it's coming up cal's got a 51 clubhouse games review that's in the ether somewhere we, who knows where it is? I still don't know. But yeah, more reviews are coming. So thank you so much for the support so far. If we can get even more support, that'd be greatly appreciated. I think we've said everything. I think that's all we've got to talk about. So let's get in to uh, the main topic for today, which is Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. It came out on Friday. As um, about, you know, Go on. Because we're a day late, there's an it's about time joke in there with the... Uh, we'll be two days late, yeah. technically, yeah. We're recording this on Monday. It's going live on Wednesday. Um, uh, so that I don't have to pull up an all-nighter. So That's fair. <laughs> it's going up on that. Wednesday. We're also going to be trying a different uh, time zone with this episode for the YouTube video. Uh, we're going to mess with the algorithm a little bit. We're going to see if a 7 p.m., 7.30 p.m. release works better for the YouTube video. So if you're used to hearing us on a f- at 5 p.m., like usual, UK time, 12 p.m. Eastern, we'll still be on podcast feeds at that time. We're just going to see if the YouTube algorithm likes us more if we upload at the time that it says it's best to upload. So um, keep a lookout for that. We'll also tweet about it as always. So make sure to go follow at the GigsYT and at Hot Games Only on Twitter if you're interested in that stuff. Cool. Um, but yeah. Yeah, let's get into it. Crash 4. So if you've listened to our podcast for uh, the past 28 episodes, um, you'll probably know that if there's one thing our entire group has in common, it's uh, the little franchise called Crash Bandicoot. So this has been like the hotly, like the hotly, uh, I don't know, anticipated game. That's the word, Ethan. Uh, of this year for us, because it's the one game that you can guarantee everyone in our group is playing. So we've played except it. For Kyle, except for Kyle, because his copy still hasn't shown up. <laughs> pray for Kyle, dude. Pray for Kyle, dude. Thing, pray. But, you know, who knows? Yeah, it should it, it should be coming, dude. Uh, anytime soon. So I thought we'd start off by saying how far we are through the game and how much time we've put into it. So I'll start. I've beaten the game. I'm around 75% completion, and I've put in 38 and a half hours in the past four days. So... <laughs> Hunter, you're looking at us like that, but these two, these two over here, no, they've no, got similar times. Me. They've got similar <laughs> times to me. Uh, Jack, how far through are you? So I've also been in the game. Uh, I'm around 50, just come up to like 55% or so mm-hmm. with the game, like percentage wise. So I've done a fair bit now, but there's still way too much to do. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Sam? Uh, I've also been in the game, and I'm at around 70%. Uh, Ethan's passing me up now because I had to go to work today, unfortunately. But uh... <laughs> Wow. Show yeah. off having a job. Imagine. 
So yeah. <laughs> and how much time have you put in? You've put in about similar amount of time, right? Probably. I mean, how much did you play today? Because I feel like we played pretty much the exact same amount of time. I played like four hours today. today. You probably guys have had a tiny four, bit more than me. Four or five. So I'm probably at like 30, 35. There you go. And I'm Hunter. How about you, a reasonable human being? How much time have you put into it? Uh, I have finished the pirate section. <laughs> Yar. Which is roughly, for those of you who have not played the game, don't worry, we're not going to go into two major spoilers. It's Crash Bandicoot, but we're not going to go into two major sto- spo- story spoilers and late game spoilers. Um, but anything that's gameplay related, we're just going to say is free game. So if you... All the masks were announced pre-release. All the characters were announced pre-release. So I feel like it's fair game to talk about all of them here. Um, but yeah, the pirate level, the pirate world. I don't even think it's halfway through the game. That's the it's third not, dimension, no, like, I think. The, yeah. Staff engine, yeah. It's like yeah. you're like a third of the way through the game. If that does, the, there's ten dimensions, right? I don't. I haven't counted them. All I know is if there's one thing that I think we should talk about first is damn, is this game big? This game is huge. We have been saying for the past couple of weeks, episode on Monday, maybe a review on Wednesday, and a spoiler cast on Friday. The the Wednesday and Friday can went completely out the window straight away because none of us have seen the the hundred yeah none of us have seen the hundred percent ending because no one's even close. There's a hundred and six percent ending, so we can't talk about that either. Um, and then the review. The game is so fucking big. There's two hundred and is it twenty five gems in the game. There's like. Something like that. Something like that. There's like 225 gems, and then the same amount inverse because of the inverted mode, so double the amount of gems. Then there's 38 relics, 38 perfect runs, and 20... 21. 21 21? Yeah, rewind tapes. I think it's 22. Yeah, maybe 22. Flashback tapes. Flashback tapes. That's a lot of good gameplay to get through, and like, and the levels are long as heck. On top of that, yeah, like, the levels are really long. I noticed that. For those of you worrying about the price tag, the first thing that I'd say is yes, the game's full price. If you haven't noticed, if you're wondering, will you get your money's worth out of this game? If you have any, if you have any intention of even coming close to completion on this game, yes, you'll get your fucking money's worth. I don't. I finished the game with like twenty hours played or something ridiculous. Like it was like eighteen hours, and that's when I finished the story. So, God, there's so much replayability in this. For game. comparison, when NST came out, we all beat Crash Two in like two hours. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I was the twentieth person to platinum that game, and I went to sleep for eight hours in between. So I even gave people like eight hours of free time where I just didn't play either, and I was still oh, like man. in the top twenty. Yeah. So yeah, we yeah. usually we're, we're we're veterans of this franchise for the most part. Um, but this game is making doing, us look but... like babies again. And it is. It's making yeah. us look like babies. So let's um, start with... I don't know. What, should, what do you want to start with? Do you want to start with gameplay? I feel like I'm talking a lot, so I feel like I need to pass over something to you. Jack, go on. Bring something up that you like about the game. Let's do it that way. Go on, Jack. I like how Crash controls overall. Mm-hmm. Um, he feels absolutely incredible. I When I first started playing the game, I had a few issues. Like, oh, I hate how you can... like double jump so late but you'll come to realize it's well needed and they've really done like a lot a lot of the puzzles even in the bonus like seem really difficult and stuff but there's crash's moveset works around it so well and after like i'd say 20 hours of playing the game you get so used to it and it starts to feel really good on top of that with the masks and shit oh I want to bring up the bonuses because I don't know if you've noticed Hunter with the bonus round. Oh yeah, the not, bonuses are bonus. interesting. There's nothing just, bonus about not like, them. <laughs> there's no, they're not like just gimme boxes. You have to actually like, you know, be intelligent about how you're doing things. Yeah, they're not happy fun times anymore. Bonuses are more like <laughs> callbacks, like Cortex and Embryo emblems and Crash One, but on steroids. It's weird. Yeah, it's gone from that because now that modern and retro modes are things, so essentially in the game you have an option between to toggle. You can either play it classic, which is retro, which is lives, and one per give you lives essentially, um, or you can play it classic, which is how I played the game. Um, it's th- they they did they flat out say to you this is the rec- we recommend you play classic. So I was like, you if you modern. Say- yeah, modern. That's it. Sorry, modern. Modern. That's it. Don't play retro. Don't play retro. Don't, yeah. Retro is all. Don't it's just it. pointless. Not worth it. It's very it. clear that the game was designed around the modern mode, and they only put in the retro mode because people would be angry if they didn't. Yeah, but yeah, and they throw so many lives at you anyway. Like I was playing retro for the first half of the game, and I had like ninety nine lives. Yeah, the whole time. Yeah, it, it just wasn't to me. It wasn't. Switch it off whenever you feel like. Yeah. 
Oh, you can switch okay. between them at all times. It's just a major inconvenience as well if you do a game over having to reset. Like, say you die at the end, I did it once, and that's when I like realized that's it, retro's going off. Because some of these levels <laughs> are really hard. Like, this game doesn't go, oh, we're going to level scale you, so it's only gradual. You get to level three, and that's when they're like, training wheels are off, yeah. bitch, let's get to fucking work. Like, that's when it's it was true. like, yeah, well, here's... It feels really jarring. Like, when you first come out of the first hub, and you're just like, after the first two levels, you're like... That was fairly all right, and then you come to the third level and it just like slaps you across the face and goes, "You played Crash Bandicoot, and now you meet this motherfucker." Engine don't play no games. Oh uh, yeah, because like that first level with uh, Lani Loli, which is the uh, inversion mask, it's the sh- reality shift. I think they call it in the game where you switch, mm-hmm. you switch between two sets of blocks that phase in and out, essentially two realities that mm-hmm. you phase in and out, and they don't it's mess like around. That's just... yeah. What? It's like Mighty Switch Force, dude. <laughs> That's what I did. It, technically, it is. It kind of is like nice, which was in a way. But they don't like go. Uh, they give you like two seconds to go. Okay, here's the mask. Here's how you get used to it, and then that's it. Like it's like yeah. straight away training wheels off. It's like okay, now play. Like get like this is how I you. Mean, get it away. is really intuitive because I got it right away. So that's props to them for, you know. If there's one thing I would so. recommend is change your button mapping. So yeah, in the options you can change your button mapping. And what we've realized from playing it a lot is if you switch your triangle button to the L1 button on so your controller, better. you don't have to take, you don't have to be messing around with your right thumb as much anymore. So it's a lot easier for you to do um, mm-hmm. certain things. So, hey, if you're struggling with the mask, try changing it to L1. It takes a bit of use to get used to, it, especially if you've been using R2 for a while, like I had. It was like trying to relearn the game again, but it really is worth it. But man, this game, it genuinely doesn't take the training wheels off. Like, like It's like, oh god, you just, straight away, no holds barred, you're gonna die a lot. And that's why I say, retro mode is pointless to me, because it's like, the game wants you to die <laughs> again and it's, again until you learn your lesson. It wants you to feel pain. It's part of it's part of the experience, you know, as with a bunch of other... That's, that's the thing with a lot of platformers these days, is that dying is very much going to happen, and it's just how you learn. <laughs> It, it, it does seem like, in a weird way, a lot of my comparisons to this game aren't in older Crash games. There is definitely some comparisons there. But a lot of, especially with the Quantum Masks and how all this new gameplay loop works, if anything, the game that I keep coming back to when I want to compare, like do a comparison to games is Celeste. Celeste is mm, a... Celeste, sure. I get a vibe like that, for sure. Yeah. To me, especially it's, in a later game for sure. To I would, me, I it's building up this tool set where it's like, hey, we're gonna be tough on you from the beginning. Here's a tool set. We're gonna make you learn it. And then when it gets to the end, and it's like, okay, I hope you fucking learned everything because here we go. Like it means it. And the bonuses are like the strawberry challenges where it's like it's optional, but it's fucking hard. Like we're not gonna just give you yeah. those strawberries. And then again, like you said, you said it reminds you of Celeste. How there's an insanely perfect relic, which is if you break all the boxes in a level. And, and in the same process, don't die, you get an extra relic, which is required for for 100% completion, <laughs> at least for the trophy list. But again, there's a load of comparisons to meet with Celeste and 2D platformers in a weird way. It's kind of very much, they have taken a lot of uh, gameplay implement, like gameplay implemented in a lot of recent 2D platforms mm-hmm. and put it into Crash. I think something I mean, else is really kind of cool, like though, because Celeste is like my favorite platformer in the mm. past several years, so it's a cool. Oh, and it, it works great here. I really great. like but about not as hard. how Go on, I like how they've just refined Crash so much in a way that they've made a, they've been able to balance the game to work, like so. How do I say? Like the level design and such, and even the bonuses and the small challenges such as the flashback tapes. Like I like how Crash feels and that they've made it so he actually doesn't control like shit around it. Mm. Instead, like he, you can really get used to how he feels and stuff, and like Celeste and stuff for your move set, the movement and all that feels really nice and all that kind of stuff. Imagine trying to like play Celeste like fucking Mario. It wouldn't yeah, work. it feels like it feels like you have like a set. It it feels like the gameplay is defined. You have a set number of rules essentially to Crash's character, and they've. Per- it's not these things where it's like a lot of the time in Crash, you're like, I don't think I should have been able to do that. I just got lucky, or a platform was coded differently in the in the 
the geometry was different there, so I was un- managed to exploit it or whatever. It feels like there's a set game principle when coming up with this, where it's like the slide. When you slide off a platform, you can go really far with the slide in this game compared to regular Crash games where you just use like, yeah, you dropping just gravity. But it's completely intended. It feels like a lot of the gameplay rules that you're using in this game feel intended. There's no point where you're like, I've cheated this. I have like where a lot of times it's like Crash is like, I'll oh, fuck this. I'm cheating this. Like I'm doing this the the awful way. Like and. Yeah, it just it, it feels really good. That's in terms of controls, it's really good. Yeah, Sam, I'm gonna come mm-hmm. to you. What what do you like about this game? Hmm. No it's pressure. Hard to try to think of something in particular. One thing I have been thinking about talking about is all the boxes and how hard it is to get all the boxes in like every single level. It's not necessarily something I enjoy. I was gonna say, do you actually enjoy yeah. this? I have. Uh... <laughs> I have not gotten all the boxes on my first pass of the level, except for like maybe twice. What level? The so first far. one. <laughs> I got I got trolled by the first one actually. I like missed that one. There's I missed a, a box. Yeah, there's like, a box oh, yeah, by one of the uh, near the start on one of the on one of the like the fallen totem poles. There's one hidden behind them, and I missed that one on yep. my first playthrough as well. Yeah. But like the second level, I got all the boxes, and then one of the other ones I did. But besides that, I was just like, okay. I'm just going to move on and come back to this later. It's the best way to deal with it, because, yeah, one of my few gripes that I have with this game is the sheer number of hidden boxes. Like, oh my god. If you've ever played Crash 2 and you ever wondered where that extra box was in Cold Hard Crash, and then you go into the bonus and you realize there's one off screen that you can't see. That's like that is like half like the that. levels of this fucking game. Every time they're like, ha, behind the plant, ha, behind yeah. that wall, ha, did you check in this upright corner? Gotta oh. be checking for them it's like it's Donkey Kong or something. Genuinely. Just like, jumping in random pits, hoping that there's something there. Some of them are so it's hard. The same with the hidden gems, too. In the inverted yeah. mode, there's hidden, well, there's hidden gems in every level, and in the regular levels, it feels like a lot of them are fair, right? It feels like, oh, that makes sense. It's in a hidden area, it's in this. In the inverted mode, there's no holds barred. They're all in awful locations that you can't find. Like, oh no. I found one in a level called Dragon that uh, Dragon Out, right? And Dragon on. Dragon on. That's it. Dragon on. Um, and in this the inverted mode, you genuinely, could. you if you're about f- oh, 100, 200 meters away from the wall that you have to scale all the way up like a two D platforming section and crash that you oh, can see one. from away. Only from that position, if you hold up on the right analog stick, you can see high enough to see the gem just sitting there at the very top corner. And it's just, it's that kind of stuff where it's like, how are you supposed to find that? Like, honestly, unless you're like shaking the camera. And thank God you can move the camera. There's like, there's a bit of give on the camera in this game where it's not a fixed position permanently. You can kind of wiggle mm-hmm. it and you can get an extra look around mm-hmm. but my god this is the thing as well I, like i just i've brought in like a lot of tonners like hidden boxes i feel like have to go the around first the tonner level i missed a box and i you was probably like oh, missed i must have just missed the hook shot yeah it's probably it's one like, in the, it's probably one in the yeah. sea or something like just randomly sitting there yeah. because that's what it's tonners... so hard to see them half the time like the game kind of asks you to like use the camera a lot but the camera doesn't really have a lot of leeway in checking where stuff is and scenery and whatnot but no, it feels like, yeah, a lot of it is when the, the, the controls feel good and the controls, you feel like every death that you've done is your fault. And it feels, whereas with the 100% completion, a lot of the gems just feel like, you hid this so that I didn't get this on the first pass through and you're going to make me come back through. Like, that's the only reason. And there's already reasons It's to such a these big levels. middle finger to, yeah. like, crash players that, like, love to just 100% the game, like, first play, like, just first play through it. Just yeah, yeah that's, like how like I like six gems. that's like how I like to play too, is just get everything as I go. And but you they can't. make you revisit like yeah. three or yeah. four times before you actually realize, oh, there was stuff here and there's stuff there. And he's just like, no, you can't. That's how I would normally play it, but with this game, I knew I was going to play it over and over again anyway, so I was like, I'll just come back and get everything. Oh, it's yeah, it feels dead good to go back to the levels anyway. Like, the you levels have to go don't... back to the levels anyway, um, if you yeah. want to 100% complete anyway. So it's not like one of those things, especially because you have different game. We might as well just talk about gameplay in particular right now. So in terms of like um, the main core gem gameplay loop is you obviously have your one for, for getting all the boxes. You have them for percentage one per through, one per through an hour thing that you have to collect. Um, but not in a bad way. Like when we first heard we have to collect one per through, a lot of us were dreading this change because we were like, oh, 
this is bad. We're, like The highest screen... amount is only 80% or something. Yeah, the highest amount is 80%. And chances are, if you've broken all the boxes, you've got, you're going to get that amount anyway. Like, there's, I think yeah. there's been one or two instances where I've heard other people, and it was mainly Kane, who mm-hmm. had got to the end of a level, broken every box, and yet still didn't have 80% one per. I've and never was, had that issue. I've never, I think it was yeah, Kane and Matt. Either. I've never had that issue. Um, it doesn't even sound like it should be possible, especially given how many boxes are in the levels. Yeah. Literally hundreds and hundreds at some levels. Yeah. It's nice you can't spin the fruit away and they'll play yeah, another the, game. Yeah, they made it, yeah, exactly. So that, you think, even if it was tedious, they make it so it's easy enough for you to get them. Like, it's not, you don't have to go out your way going, oh, I make sure I need to get all these one for fruit. Chances are you'll get them. Yeah, they just kind of suction towards you after you break the boxes now too mm-hmm. so those That's are th- nice. yeah so those are three of the six gems the fourth one is for breaking all the boxes like we said the fifth one is for finishing the level in three deaths or less which we've had this discussion with jack um early on in press reveals and stuff like that they said it was five and they changed it to three at some point now yeah. i said about you i feel like from a casual perspective i think they should have stuck with five I think five yeah. would have been fairer because my god is three too like too little. I even yeah. I sometimes I go, say, oh, I'm screwed. I will say it is good in a sense that they made it three in case like for training wheels kind of purposes. I guess like it trains you to really make sure you're not dying a lot. And if you get perfectionist, with, yeah, yeah. If you want to go for perfectionist, then maybe like I get it three probably trains you enough. Five, however, if you just want to play the game casually, definitely should have stuck to five. Yeah. I agree. So far in the early game, I haven't really had an issue getting that when I make a solitary attempt to make sure that I'm doing that one. Mm. I will say but, it's easy you know, to get the three. Know. It is easy to get the three death or less gem as long as you're just going through the level and ignoring boxes. If that's you your objective, that. like if you're yeah, if you're doing an any percent run of like I need to get this three death or less gem, mm. that if you just focus on that, you'll get it. Do I think that's reasonable? It's just when a lot of the time you're like, oh, I might as well get all the boxes because I might as well go for the perfect medal and see how we go. So you're doing the, you're getting all the boxes anyway. And then that's when I'm like, maybe it just should be a bit more. And just come up and then you start dying and you're just like, Shit. yeah. <laughs> and then the sixth one is, as we've mentioned, the hidden gem, the little hidden gem, which can be anywhere in the level. Um, usually, if you're, you're playing as a different anywhere. character, if you're in the regular version, usually it's in their half of the level. Um, and then an inverted. I think it's the opposite. I don't think I've found a single like inverted upside down gem. There might be one or two. Actually, there is. Actually, no, I can't think. Can you... I don't remember. I don't think so. But it's, it's weird. It's very weird how the gems work in the hybrid well, levels, which are multiple. What do you mean the inverted like hybrids? Like when it's two characters? Yeah. Well, remember so when... Crash is there's one in Crash is like after before the arch thing. It's like body slammed down the wind, but that yeah, was in Crash well, yeah. After. In the like, so I'm saying in the inverted sections, it's usually playing as Crash or Coco, and in the regular, it's usually playing as that character where the gem's hidden. It's really weird how that works, but I don't know. There's probably a rule to it that we haven't figured out, but mm-hmm. yeah, that's there. So that's usually the gameplay loop, and there's five characters: Crash and Coco, who are interchangeable. Um, I mentioned it to you guys just before the podcast started coco's got a new voice actor which hey there you go seems to be a lot of this game it's got a new cast the only people that are really around still are the voice for aku and the voice for cortex. um cortex. cortex yeah yeah coco's been replaced yeah. uh Brio's different. Been replaced by... engine's yeah. the same guy from nst but he sounds better um much yeah. better <laughs> much better than he really good NST his performance performances across the board were so good in this game yeah they really are but yeah and uh, i change. really like engine in his little part since i actually got to experience all of that mm-hmm. so far mm-hmm. yeah his uh his boss fight is really cool too the boss yeah. fights are really good do you want to talk game. about boss fights because i was going to mention boss fights go for it go for it man go for it uh you can go first hunter if you want uh yeah engine's boss fight is well i did the weird little squid thing in the pirate section too but engines is the way more is. impressive Oh, Louise, yeah. Louise. They got Louise. Louise because, it, time. <laughs> you know, it has the classic. It starts you off relatively simple, and then it just keeps adding layers to it. And by the third one, where it, like, split the platform apart, and you had to go, like, get the little explodey guys from mm-hmm. the moving platforms, that was real cool. I liked it a lot. Yeah. One thing I would probably want to mention is I'm so glad that they made the boss fights for once in a Crash game, not an absolute joke. Yeah. They they're, they're, they're actually, actually good. hard. They're, some of them are actually yeah. challenging. And yeah. the, again, they have. it feels like they have these guiding principles for the boss fights this time around, where a lot of them are just 
spinning something back or jumping and that's literally usually that's all the that's literally it all the boss fights are designed around those kind of concepts of either hitting something or jumping and that's about it but just because they followed that and didn't go oh what if we do this weird thing where we shoot where you get in a fucking spaceship and you shoot at them or like other shit like that or let's make it a joke where tiny just jumps where you were two seconds ago and then because you're always constantly moving he never hits you like not shit like that like actually having hard boss fights like the engine uh wmp uh boss fight uh yeah weapon of mass percussion i'm just checking i got that right uh, <laughs> weapon of mass percussion yeah exactly it's it's great um but yeah even with stuff like that it very much is just oh it's learning a pattern but then it I, I think they're really well done. And some of the later ones are also really well done as well. Um, yeah. There's not a bad boss fight in this game, which is nice for a Clash yes. game, because usually you'll have a shit one, like Ripperoo, where you can literally just go and take a piss. Like, you can literally just go, okay, see you later, I'm, I'm off, because he does the same thing every time. Or, like, awful, like, tiny mini, like, tiny shit, where it's just, oh, am I going to get lucky? What's the RNG on this one? It's like, there's no bad Can't wait boss. for Joe to spin for ten years. Will they slow down anytime soon? Probably not. Like it's one of the things where it's just like not if your name is Ethan. Yeah, we don't talk about even it. like with remember like Tiny and Warped where you could just stand in the corner. Yeah, and just cheese you it. Just stand yeah. in the corner. Just and cheese it. And then even put it back in NST. Yeah, and the only difference is that you yeah. th- that they throw cheese at you while you're in there. That's the only difference. Is just that they know it's there and they're like, oh fuck it, we'll keep it in. It's shit. The boss fight is shit anyway. But no, it's really fun having these new boss fights. They're actually good. So that's nice. Because usually it's just, there's usually one good boss fight in a Crash game, right? It's like in Crash 1. Crash 1's boss fights aren't actually the worst. But in 1, you'll probably say, oh, it's probably Brio. Because that's the, the only one that isn't just, oh, wait for the opening and hit. Whereas Brio, you have to Kong and Cortex weren't that bad in 1, actually. Yeah, Cortex is pretty decent as well. Qualicong is just wait for the thing and hit, though. Like, it just is wait. Yeah. Um, Crash Two, it's obviously Engine. Engine's the best boss fight in that game. Every every boss fight's bad in Crash Two, apart from Engine. Yeah, where the other Engine's not even that great. Yeah, okay. and yeah, then um, in Crash Three, is there even a good boss fight in Crash Three? I like to argue that there isn't. Maybe Entropy. Entropy. Maybe Entropy. Entropy. Cortex. I didn't mind Cortex actually. No, nah, Cortex is awful because it's the same Cortex size. Cortex is a cool visual spectacle, but it's not like all just that. Stand still and nothing, nothing will hit you, dude. It's like... True. That's true. It's not that good actually. I take it back. Dingo Dial's my boy, dude. Dingo yeah, Dial's but again, cool. you can, yeah, Dingo Dial's is cool if it wasn't for the fact that you can just jump over the fucking obstacles and just end it in two seconds. That's cheating. That's glitching. It's not Please glitching. You can just slide jump. It's in te- like. <laughs> You know, you have to glitch high, but anyway, I don't guess the boss fights are good. How about the new characters, Jack? I know you love the new characters. Let's talk about the new characters. There's three of them. Let's start with the early game one first. Um, Torna. Torna first. Go for it. You're trying to think of something nice to say? I don't know how I feel. Like, I'm mixed on them just now. I definitely want to spend a bit more time playing them. Yeah. I, I will say Torna's fine. But Torna controls for, really well and she plays really design, well. However. It's the level design that's I, the problem with Torna. I've only played the first level with her and I thought it was pretty cool so far. I don't know if that just gets worse. No, she plays really well. It's just the level design. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, like the, where yeah. the box placements are and stuff are really finicky and mm. shit. I don't like it. But yeah, overall, like, I guess that's <laughs> true because I did miss a box that was probably just like oh off somewhere that i wasn't looking but yeah. as far as like the way that the level progressed it was real cool it felt proper mm-hmm. like swashbuckly which is i've never really cared about tana before she was just like one of those other bandicoots that are like oh you showed up in a well, game she was in one game and... anyway yeah yeah and so when they were like oh we're bringing her back i was like that doesn't do anything for me but she's really great I'm in this game. Properly like, yeah. interested I've not in her. Finished her story or any of the other character stories, but so far from what I can tell, she's really good. good. Like honestly, she's one of my favorite characters to the point where I was again, I was like, oh, Torna's back, cool, different universe Torna, where she's essentially Crash in that universe. I'm like, okay, cool, cool idea. Don't care, but cool idea. But then by the end of it, I'm like, yeah. oh, I actually like this no. Torna. I hope she sticks around for the like for the foreseeable future. I'm like, I actually like this character. It's cool. And Torna isn't useless anymore, and is an actual character. Yeah. I'm like, hey, that's cool. It's, it's neat. I like it. 
But no, it's mainly her level design. I don't have anything to say. I like the way that she plays personally. I think she controls fine. Like all the characters yeah, feel sure. good to control. It's just the levels around it. And I feel like Torna's levels are the weakest out of the three. I like that it's a different tool set from Crash and Coco as well with the hookshot and the slam thing. The hookshot honestly feels like it's cheating on sometimes with some enemies because you could just be on my way and just be like, there. Same, dead. but also, dead. I feel like yeah. it counters it because she has some of the hardest platforming in the later sections of the game. Her kick also kind of sucks in terms of range, yeah. so yeah, I guess. it's one of, Yeah, it's one of those things, because like, she has like really precise platforming, and she's also one of the most she's the most limited character in terms of platforming later on in the game as well. You have her wall jump, but her jumps are pretty low, and the like... Oh, Cortex is pretty limited. No, but yeah, but all of his sections are puzzle-based. That's the thing. They're all well-designed puzzles for the most part. There's one level that's awful. But um, for the most part, they're well designed. Whereas Torners are timing based. With like, there's one level in the snow area which is really bad. Like, it's got really awful cycles that are annoying, and it's in the bear level. So you have to perfect both of those things, and it's just like, wow, that's really great. Thank you, Toys for Bob. Really cool. But no, I liked her. I don't know, Sam. Do you have anything to add about Torn? I really enjoyed all of the side characters i really like playing as all of them my main gripe with tana specifically was just how many black boxes they put out in the middle of nowhere they had to grapple to like there's one level that there's three right at the beginning that you have to just grapple and hit and it's like yeah you can have to help know. me with that by the way yeah it gets kind and of so had to help me with it as well like it's it's the ever it's the ever going cycle of yeah not besides having... that though i really like how she plays as well i think it's really tight controls and the platforming's good and yeah yeah the other two are, uh, are more interesting. Hunter hasn't played them yet. Um, yeah, it's yeah. Cortex and Dingo Dial. And Cortex is, if you've seen the trailers from Cortex, I feel like you've got a good idea of what Cortex plays like. Um, yeah, that looks fascinating, and I'm interested to get to that. He's but... interesting, but man, is some of his sections hard. Like, mm -hmm. honestly. And he's got, like, of... some of the most interesting, like, moveset in terms of, like, if you're looking into speed running, I think. Yeah. It's... It's having the dash and all that. He's got a really interesting moveset. And unlike Torna, I feel like a lot of the level design does help to elevate his tool set a lot. Whereas, whereas Torna is just how she has a hook shot, and instead of making you use it to deal with enemies, it's more of a hey, look, there's a fucking box twenty feet over there in the middle of the wall to hope you can see it so that you can hook shot it. Whereas Cortex is very much oh, here's a hidden gem, it's over there, and you need to do two precise dashes to get to it. And it's like one of those things that's like oh, this is actually part of the gameplay loop and it's actually used a lot where i feel like cortex's all of cortex's movement systems and all of these gameplay elements are actually used where i think torna has a lot it actually of potential. feels like they spent more time on the cortex levels than torna's honestly i think cortex was the first character that they put into the game to be honest i think he was the first one they worked on um, yeah which makes sense right that's probably the first character you would yeah. go to but all in all they're hard but i think they're really good the, the character that surprised me the most was dingo dial to be honest because Dingo Dial, out of the three of them, is my favorite character to play as. I, I thought I really he was going like to control like Dial. shit, and he doesn't. He controls He's so great. That's well. Good to hear because of because hearing that you were going to play as him sounded like a novel thing, but I was like, oh man, the novelty will probably. Wear I got to carry this guy about that's got a dumpster truck of a fucking ass, but tell yeah. you what, he controls <laughs> so smoothly. And that's that's the thing about this game is it feels like a lot of times you're like, oh, this just feels like it's a novelty, right? They're going back in time. Uh, the going back in time section, the having all these playable characters interact and stuff like that sections, the having this, in a way, cliched storyline, you're like, oh, this is all just like, oh yeah, it's all on the surface stuff, but it's like, they actually, it's all done so fucking well, where you're thinking, oh, they're just gonna half ass this, right, Dingo Dial? He's gonna be half ass. He's not. And he's really good, and he gets a fucking story as well. He's not just there for the fucking show, he actually does have a little side story going on. And mm -hmm. it's not just for show. They probably just, oh, treated him well, like too as well. Like yeah, it's not Dingo Dow for Dingo Dow's sake. He has a little story arc. He has progression. He has fucking character development in a Crash game, which is weird, dude. It's weird having this like idea of oh, Dingo Dow is kind of an, a good guy now. He's just like he's just chilling. He just wants to live his life, and he's been abducted essentially. And it's just, it's a really good story. And I really like Dingo Dao's levels. Cool. They're a mixture of puzzle and platforming. And it, I think it works really well. His little boost, he has like a little, if you hold X, he has kind of like a hover move. Um, and it's really well done. Like, honestly, I was really surprised. I was like, okay, here comes Dingo Dao, but he's shit. And he wasn't. He was my favorite out of the three Dingo, by far. Dingo, Dingo. Yeah. 
I love how um, the leaf blower like kind of works when you're like the first time like you even just suck up a TNT and just shoot it at something. It feels so good. Mm-hmm. It just so feels good. good. Yeah, he hung up his flamethrower for a leaf blower. Yeah, that's great. Because basically, yeah, the start of the the start of his journey is someone's trying to get into his diner, and he's like, "Kids, get off my lawn!" and takes out his leaf blower. He's like, "Ah, oh, I know that'll that'll deal with them. I'll take my leaf blower out." Um, but no, I, I love Dingo. Nice. Like, honestly, all three of the characters do feel good. Um, I feel like if any of them were rushed, it was probably Torna, just from the looks of it. I feel like Torna was the last one they decided to do for a while. But at the same time, I don't think this game was rushed. Like a lot like when we came no, when we were talking about it seems NS like it had the proper amount of care put into it. When when we were talking about NST and when we're talking about Reunited, there were obvious points where development was rushed whether it's Crash 2 in NST or Spyro 3 just not working as well as the other two and being put to a, off to a different developer for Reignited, right? Um, in Crash 4, with just the um, sheer amount of content in this game, whether it's inverted mode, whether it's the regular base levels, whether it's all the time trial stuff, where the time trials are actually different in this game and change the boxes that are present. It's not just a oh, it's the same level and then we change some of the time crates. They, they add nitros and TNTs to make it harder and add masks as well, so that it's like a oh, balancing yikes. act. It, yeah, it's it's really weird, oh. and honestly, I, from a gameplay wise, I think it's really good. Um, it's such a weird year for games because we've had so many good games come out this year. Where it's like yeah. game of the year now for me anyway. Our game of the year is going to be so fucking awful because there's been this so many be, good games. It's going to be great. Yeah. Um. <laughs> But no, that's characters. Um, let's talk about story and just the look of it, I guess. Does that anyone want to start on like animation and quality of it? Uh, I'll go first, I go guess. For it. Go for it. Uh, the first cutscenes you have in the game, even like when you first meet up with Lanny Lowy, mm-hmm. it has like the development of the game talks a lot about how they were like going for this Looney Tunes kind of like animation stuff and all that. You really see it like just from the beginning of the game when you get the first open yeah. cutscenes and stuff. It's so charming to see Crash interact with the masks and stuff, and Coco and Aku at the beginning of the game and whatnot. And even going further into the game and stuff, you start to see like once characters interacting with each other, it's so good. I love every aspect of it so much. Yeah, it's like to me, it's the best. Crash has ever looked. This new art style, I know a lot of people hate. Like for some reason, a lot of people prefer no, NST's why? art style, which is essentially we needed to rush this fucking game out. That's the art style Slap of the game. It's just yeah, dude. Oh fucking hand gate, just any fucking texture, dude. Slap that shit on, dude. Crash looks like a fucking Cheeto. Fuck it, get him in, dude. <laughs> this art style reminds me a lot more of Reignited, um, where they mm. actually tried and um. Man, I think it's the best Crash has ever looked, to be honest. This game is gorgeous. The game looks absolutely amazing. My only gripe is sometimes the animation kind of... Uh, sorry, not the animation. Um, well, I guess the art style of the game kind of makes it hard to see boxes. But that's about it. Yeah, it... Like, yeah, the way the game looks, uh, sometimes the screen just... You could get lost in it a little mm-hmm. bit. That's why I appreciate the little circle they got to tell you where you're going to drop to. Oh, that thing is so important. It's Honestly, really God. useful. Yeah. Jack was playing a lot. Like, the first, like, third of the game, Jack was like, I'm not having it on. This is baby mode. I'm like, no, Jack, it's a necessary part of the game. You need that shit. He's like, nah, <laughs> baby mode. And then, like, Don't he got to, like, to dragging right? on. And he's like, yeah, fuck this. I'm just, I'm sticking the thing on. It's so... You'll get to a point where you'll be like, I'm not going to feel bad for putting this on anymore because the game's going to proper smack you about for not using it. Which you shouldn't feel bad for in general because it was an intended part of the game. Yeah, it's just, a, yeah. Yeah, it's exactly. an, it's just there because you know, back in the ye old PS one days, things popped easier because of the fact that it was the, what you were supposed to be focusing on. Now that everything looks equally as good, it kind of blends together more. So they need something. And it's the best. Yeah. To make it. it's the best way to do it as well because you can't now with in the days of. Um, actual lights like actual like physical like lighting in games and you know all this ray tracing and all this garbage right that everyone's trying to say is the next best thing right you can't have just like a physical shadow underneath your character anymore right light's dynamic you're not you're not going to be able to do that without it looking bad 
So I feel like this is a great like little in between where it's like you still have a positional marker saying, "Hey, you're here. When you're landing, you're gonna land here." Um, without making the game look bad when you have dynamic lighting and Crash having this weird fucking circle, um, underneath him, which is supposed to be a shadow. I think it's a better way of doing it to be honest, and it it works really well from what I've played. Sometimes it's a bit hard to get it right, but I think it's as good as you're gonna get in terms of a, a drop shadow nowadays for a platformer so yeah it's pretty yeah good. the only time i've ended up misjudging where i was going was when i was like coming back towards the screen and doing a couple jumps that got me a few times but mm-hmm. that's about it but no yeah but back... in terms of like yeah, another yeah it's another like aesthetics thing i think that's what you're going back to anyway right yeah that was yeah that's all i was gonna do anyway yeah but, um... The level design in terms of like how everything looks is amazing so usually in like original trilogy you'd have like certain areas that would be like so for example snow go cold hard and whatnot they'd all look the exact same but each like main hub world of the game it'll have like an ice world for example but each level will, like will look way different it looks so much nicer and all these kind of stuff yeah instead of everything looking so samey like it used to back then now it's like every area has its own atmosphere the anime yeah. and whatnot it's so nice like each area like each area might have levels that are themed similarly but it still feels like you're progressing through a specific thing rather like than an actual world yeah it all just being the, the same looking it feels yeah it feels yeah. like a game where you could take eventually you get you'll get to a point where you, someone can you can literally take a screenshot of a level and you can go i know exact i don't not only do i know what hub world that is i know which exact level that is because it's not one of those, it's not like, oh, look, here's the fucking uh, medieval England level, and here it is again at sunset, and here it is again in the rain. It isn't just like, oh, the weather's changed. Hi, the weather's changed. Wow. PS1. It's like, for example, Dino Dash it has a completely different aesthetic and look to it than all the other dinosaur-themed levels. Although, but they all still fit within like the same cohesive like kind of world. It's really the 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 art style and direction for this game has been really well done. I know Dash and like even Snowy Out, like even when you saw the demo, you can even notice like the levels look different throughout even just the one level itself. Yeah, there's distinctive areas to it. It feels like the art team honestly has nailed it. And going back to like the animation, I honestly like the animation quality in this game is something that I feel that like people need to talk about more because my god, is the animation great in this game? Because the cuts, whether it's not necessarily even the death animations, just the actual like story cutscenes in general are actually gorgeous. Like it's some of the best like cartoonish animation I've seen in a video game. It's so well done, and it goes back to what you said, Jack, on the Looney Tunes aesthetic. But it's just like even when you see characters like Coco and Torna interacting, it feels like an actual like cartoon. It feels like a three D animation. It's like one of those animated movies. Yeah, it in felt a way. like they're little back and forth that i saw was felt like something you'd see in a show like oh what did we die or something yeah <laughs> no why why would you say that yeah it's, it's let's w- move on and the oh, writing in particular dude, the writing in this game yeah. like we've been saying it a lot like me and jack keep quoting it to each other over and over and over again and same with sam right the writing in this game is so fucking good like honestly i don't think we've had this good a writing since twin sanity like i think this is up there with twin sanity of best writing in terms of how comedic it is but also just how well it is like they haven't fucked a single character up which i appreciate long and characters Lowly's that didn't have any of the term putts. characters that didn't have any personality before like tana and even dingo dell in the sense i guess you could say they've just nailed out the park with them and made them their own characters and characters like cortex which you know everyone kind of feels oh we know cortex but there's so well there's been so many ways where so many games at this point that have fucked cortex up like that have just not done like justify cortex i think like ever since cortex peaked into insanity there's not really been ever a time where cortex kind of came back to that height and this is finally where he is like oh cortex is actually back now and lex lang i think this is I love Twin Sanity with all my heart, right? I love. Twin- I think this is Cort- I think this is Lex Lang's best performance, like in terms of Cortex. I honestly think he's he nailed every single line in this game. It's so good, like it's not as I wouldn't say it's as like Twin Sanity to me is punchline after punchline after punchline after punchline, and some of them hit and some of them are a bit shit, but they keep going along, and it's like. For every joke, you don't have enough time to go, that joke was shit because there'll be another one that hits. With this game, it's a lot more, cl- I, it's trying to be a lot more clever with its 
humor like it's not necessarily just being like oh here's a funny joke it's more consistent yeah a lot more consistent yeah, yeah. and a lot smarter with its writing as well i feel like mm-hmm. it's not just a hey here's a funny fucking sh- like kids joke just for the sake of it it's really smart with its humor where it's just like oh man there's so much good another stuff, thing so that i love as well with the writing is that they've actually given characters the chance to have more lines by having like characters like m Jin, for example actually talking throughout levels so even when you're playing a scratch yeah like they have so many moments yeah. where like they're building up to the characters and like the boss fights and all this and so they're giving so many times to them to even throw out these punchlines and stuff and even looking at cortex you have flashback tapes mm-hmm. so you get more of his like stupid shit that he says as well and just even them levels a brio just... and yeah brio and engine are also in the flashback <laughs> tapes brio well. prep for revival ray again <laughs> yeah the revivotron and <laughs> embryo <laughs> the revivotron like yeah, stuff like that. They just embryo shit. the mop bucket. <laughs> yeah, and the fact that they just give him more law to crash. It's just so weird. Like where it's like, oh yeah, we're taking this seriously. We're gonna get. Have you ever wondered why Crash is called Crash Bandicoot? Well, in this game, now you know. Like the the game tells you and gives you an actual backstory to why he's called Crash Bandicoot, and there you go. And so many stupid references to other uh, franchises and stuff like that. There's so much random stuff and so many throwbacks to. Um. The prior games in the series i don't think it's as much as everyone was expecting i think that going in we kind of all expected there to be more references to i mean i'm kind of glad they didn't i don't want it being too on the nose and too fan service no, i guess but I th- then it wouldn't feel like its own thing yeah but it is there is a lot to be there whether it's just a throwaway line that they'll give that to everyone else is just like a completely normal line but everyone else is like oh that's there or if it's just like for example, one thing Sam didn't notice was there's like a photo of the evil twins in one of the levels, just on a monitor somewhere. That you... oh, nice. Yeah, there's one of Crunch too. There's one of Crunch nice. too, and Crunch is on the fridge, and there's a load of like, there's a load of hidden. There's a, there's 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 multiple Spyro of uh, references in the game, both physically. And there's the snow boxes. There's the snow. There's so many references, just random crap, dude. Someone told me, and I didn't notice. That one of the bonus rounds in this game is literally two Crash Three bonuses stuck together, and I didn't even notice. Really? Yeah, one of them. Really? Yeah, one of them is two of the. I think it's two of the medieval bonuses stuck together, or so two of the Crash Three levels stuck together. And I was like, oh, I did not know that because I obviously don't know Crash Three well enough. But that's really cool. Um, You've played it a lot lately. You should know that. Oh, well, maybe, but no. Unfortunately, not. But no, there's so many references to in this game, and yeah, man. I, I keep saying I, Toys for Bob just nailed it. Like I think they just have. Like I don't I don't understand like how they did it because I think everyone was like, oh Crash yeah Crash does Crash have a future after NST? And it's like I think it does now. I think people I think Toys for Bob can make Crash and not be shit. Like I think it's actually possible. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Which is nice yeah. after several years of it just being dormant, and then even before it went dormant, the past couple of games being not so great anyway. This is the first Crash game in 12 years. This is the first new Crash game, should I say. Obviously, we've had NST and Nitro Fuel, but this is the first Crash game in 12 years, and to have it come out and it actually not be a disappointment. Everyone's expectations were... Mine were pretty high, to be honest, after seeing all the trailers, but um, most people were like, in the community and stuff like that their expectations were like eh it's a new crash game so what could like it could be good but it's probably just going to be fine and we'll just play for it and so so many people have come out on the other side and saying actually no this is really good like this is grown past my expectation it's pretty great i think yeah yeah and it's also like it just feels like the game itself it feels like it's got its own identity as well it doesn't it's not being dragged down by the original trilogy or anything it really feels like it's become its own thing it feels like it feels like the start of something new in a way yeah it feels like this isn't just hey this is just this is the it doesn't feel in a way yes it is the fourth game in this new line of games but in a way it kind of just feels like the first of a new like era it doesn't feel like oh this is crash 4 it feels like it's the start of crash's new like whatever's next for crash which we hope is on life yeah a new lease on life in a way it feels more of its own thing than a sequel to the originals in a way. Um, 
at least with art style wise like obviously the gameplay is very similar to what you come to expect from the original three crash games but it feels like its own thing it doesn't feel like toys for bob's just trying to be naughty dog it feels like they're like oh yeah what if we make this our own and some of the levels you can just tell like naughty dog would have never have done uh some of these levels um ever really if they had done it in crash but my god did toys for bob nail some of these levels um man I don't know. Does anyone have anything else that they want to add to it? Sam's being so quiet. <laughs> Sam's just annoyed because we dragged him away from the game to talk about no, Crash. Dude, that's it's why. fine. That's why. Crash, Sam's like, I just want to play this game. Just, I just want to play this game. Play He's got the addiction. <laughs> I mean, that's my thing. Is I can't yeah. stop playing it. That's the, the thing. Is Same. Every minute that I've been home, I've just been playing it. It's as much fantastic. as we say we've been enjoying it, we've had our hardships with the game as well. So. Oh, it's hard as hell. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard as yeah. hell. Some we cannot things... emphasize that enough. It's insane the whole so time difficult. that there's no training wheels. No training wheels. Training wheels are off. Um, I feel like one last thing is we didn't really talk... <laughs> one thing that we didn't really talk about, we talked about one of the masks. We should probably talk about the other three real quick. Um, mm. What are your thoughts on Akano, Ika Ika, and Kapuna are? There we go, nailed it. Ha ha, got him. Um, uh, well, obviously, Hunter's only played with Lonnie Loli. I've only got to Lonnie Loli, and then I just met Akano. Yeah. But I haven't used him yet. Well, we can start with Akano. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. can start with Akano. Uh, Akano's I the think one that Akano they didn't really talk about. Shit. <laughs> what? But I, def- I think Akano's cool as fuck, but I definitely don't think he was used enough. Yeah, that's my problem with him, is he's got, in the world you're about to go to, Hunter, he's used a lot. Like, that's kind of his yeah. world. But then after that, he hardly shows up until the end. And it's yeah, just one of those things of, this is a really cool idea. I just wish it was used more. Because, like, for example, you know, everyone's seen the time slow down mask Kapuna noir everywhere because it was all yeah. over the marketing. That's used a hell of a lot. And it's really good. And there's some real fun puzzles involved with it. All the masks mm-hmm. are great. There's not one that I'm like, oh, this one's shit. Kapunawa feels hard to get used to, and then Ika Ika, I, I'm terrible at using Ika Ika, which is the gravity mask. Ika Ika, the problem but, with Ika Ika is... Dude, gravity stuff, I imagine, like, it's, even playing, like, Gravity Rush, that was hard for me to get used to at first. Gravity things, it messes with your orientation a lot. Yeah, so. the main, my main problem with, yeah, with, is in Gravity Rush, right, my problem with Gravity Rush is sometimes I just feel sick, I'm like, right, I've had enough of Gravity Rush now, I need to stop because it's getting, it's messing with my head, right? Whereas this one, it's because you're switching, you're phase shifting and the camera's static, right? It's one of those things where your brain sometimes just goes, oh no, I'm in wrong gravity. Like, it's just like, oh, I thought I was doing something, but I got it completely fucking wrong because my brain just like, I'm gone. The gravity is just like, you just forget. When you get to like Snack World and you're like upside down with Ika Ika doing the wall jumps and shit, like the wall running. Oh yeah. Oh, that fucks with your head. That part was rough. Yeah, there's some parts where you're like, oh, my brain, it hurts, what am I doing? Like, It's one of those things where it's like, I screwed something up, I don't know what part, what, in what part my brain just shut down. <laughs> but no, all three of the masks, all four masks are really good. Um, I thought we should mention that beforehand. Um, but no, I think that's everything. I can't think of anything else other than saying, would you guys recommend it, which is my usual classic. Um, it's Crash Bandicoot, buy it, it's good. Yeah. Is it worth the full <laughs> price? In your opinion, is it for sure is it worth the fifty pounds slash sixty dollars? Buy it twice. I haven't played all of it yet, but I like what I've got so far. If if things continue to go well, I could see this being my favorite one. Mm. It's so it's getting close. And spoiler alert yeah. for the review that eventually goes out: <laughs> it's probably going to be a must play for in terms of if you're a fan of three D platformers, then it's probably going to be a must play. Yeah. Especially if you're into like challenging yeah. platforms. And given all the uh, things that you guys said go into getting the hundred percent, the potential to get your money's worth is certainly seems. I to mean, be there. if I as like as uh, we we like crash veterans, right? For those of you who don't know, who only listen to the podcast, um, we all except for Hunter in some way, shape, or form have done speedruns of Crash in the past. Whether it's us three are good at uh, are known for Crash to hundred percent mainly. But Kane was known for Crash One, and like a lot of us have our history in Crash and speedrunning, so we're really good at Crash. And to have us be at like thirty-eight hours and still be nowhere near done, if we're thirty-eight hours in and nowhere near done, 
I think you're going to get your money's worth if you're just like a regular person that's, hey, I just like food. We're recording this four days after release, and only one person or so has probably gotten the platinum trophy. Yeah, literally, we're. It's it's one person. It's got to be one person. We've been counting down the days, and we saw it went to 0.1, which means at least one person's got it. So we're like, oh, wow. One person in five days has 100%ed this game fully. There you go. There's plenty to go around, and I feel like it. If you're into 3D platformers, hey, here you go. Buy this. Don't buy the 3D Mario collection. Um, oh, get that in the bin. Just get that in the bin, that. dude. <laughs> buy, a good, buy a good platformer. Buy Crash 4. It's Don't throw that time. case or I'll smack you. What? <laughs> Don't throw that case or I'll no. smack you. It's a, good, it's a good game and it'll go on my shelf next to NST and Nitro Fuel. Put it next to Skyrim. No, Skyrim. Which one? Skyrim. Which one? <laughs> Which one? Skyrim Switch, PS4. Yeah, 360, PS3. Put it on the good game pal, but no. Like, fridge. The fridge, exactly, but no. Definitely. Etch a sketch. Etch a sketch. Hey, <laughs> we can dream. We can dream. Where is it, Todd? Where is it? Um, but no. The Alexa. Definitely check out Crash 4. And to be fair, if you've listened to fucking 55 minutes of Crash 4 talk and you don't already own the game, what the fuck is wrong with How you? How are you doing? Buy Why the game, you, you dumb dumb. Or if you're waiting for a sale, that's fair enough too. Because if you're not into really hard shit, then I can see why you're like, hey, maybe pay less. Because if you're gonna not finish it, maybe 50 is a bit. 50 slash 60 dollars is a bit steep. But there you go. I think that's everything we have to talk about, really. It's everything we can talk about at the moment, I guess. Yeah. Without spoilers. Without spoilers. We will probably be doing a spoiler kind of discussion a bit later. I know I said it would be soon after. There's no chance in hell because no one's going to have this game finished in time. Um, so I will promise we'll either talk about it in a podcast or a spoiler cast at a later date. We'll talk all about the later game, the story spoilers. We all, like I say, we're all still blind. We don't even know what the 100% ending is because none of us have looked it up. So we can't really talk about it. But no, I think that's everything that we can say. We'll be back for more soon. Hunter, where can people find you? YouTube.com slash ReaperHunter23. Nice. Jack? Also check out my oh. 80s review. There you go. Perfect. I enjoyed making that. Hey, yeah, and it's really good, and you should check it out and leave a like and leave a comment so the algorithm likes it so we make more. That's how it works. Get us to 100 subs as well. That's a thing. <laughs> Jack, where can people find you? Twitch.tv slash Jacobean or Twitter.com slash Jacobean. Nice. Sam? You can find me once every three months on Twitch.tv slash Beck. And what a great <laughs> three-month uh, period it is where you're away. <laughs> I meant to say what a great time it is when you're back every three months, but it came out wrong. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to roll wow. with it. Can't even shit talk, right? <laughs> I, I'm shit. Well, just... he was trying to compliment you. I was trying to you, compliment you, but it turned into an insult because I was an idiot. Uh, you can find me at Chaotic Ether on Twitter and Twitch. Uh, remember, you can get the show every week at bit.ly slash the giggers or on podcast services everywhere. Just go to linktree slash the giggers. Link tr.e slash hot games only actually not the gigas i'm shit at this um where you can um find every podcast service we're on or just search hot games only on your favorite uh, podcast provider we're probably already there um remember 5 p.m uk time is the time uh when we go live on podcast feeds uh also should be youtube we'll see we're experimenting so we'll see how it goes if we get if if hey if the algorithm likes us more at seven we might be shifting video podcasts around but Every Monday, you'll find us here. We'll follow us on Twitter at HotGamersOnly or at TheGiggersYT. We'll send you notifications so you'll never miss an episode. Um, other than that, that's been our show. Thank you ever so much for listening. We'll be back next week with God knows what. Um, but until then, see you next time. Bye. Bye. Toodaloo.